Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing well. Um, so the past few days have been crazy with everything going on in the WNBA that I've been watching and reading up on. It's just been crazy. So there was a game a few days ago, which was Friday that just passed. May 27, 2022 was Indiana Fever versus the Sparks. I did watch that game. There were like there were like a, um, other games I watched as well, but I felt like this one was, you know, more important to talk about. Because I know I always do videos on the Connecticut Sun, or I may do a video on, well, basically the Connecticut Sun all the time, because that is one of my favorite teams. So I just wanted to at least talk about the Indiana Fever for a change because I know it was a lot going on with them this week as far as uh, Marianne Stanley getting fired, who was originally their coach. And they replaced her with Carl Knox, who was an assistant coach under her, I believe. So he ended up being the coach for, he's the Indiana Fever coach now for them since they fired Marianne Stanley. And I'm going to talk about the Indiana Fever versus the Sparks game, you know, in a few minutes, a little later. I just want to first talk about, you know, the situation with Marianne Stanley getting fired. Um, in my opinion, I felt like it was right to let her go because the team was losing a lot. And when I have seen them play some games, it just didn't seem like she was like into coaching them or getting the team together to win. I just didn't see that, you know, that winning attitude with her compared to Carl Knox. When he was coaching on Friday that just passed, that's the, um, the game they played against the Sparks, and they actually won that game. He was actually into the coaching. He was encouraging them. He was pushing them. He was just into it. And it made them feel more confident. I, you know, I saw a difference in that team. That was a different Indiana Fever team that day. I was watching the game, and I'm looking as to like, wow, this is this did not look like the same Indiana team from like last week, or when Marianne Stanley was coaching. It was. I felt like I was watching a whole different team Friday. So I'm glad they made some changes, you know, with the coaching staff. Because I think that was coming. I had a feeling that was coming because I've seen complaints. I've, you know, read things on social media that people were, weren't really too happy with Marianne Stanley coaching Indiana Fever. Like her coaching style wasn't there. The team was losing. Just something wasn't right. And some people probably were already complaining saying they think they should let it go. So, you know, I don't know if i seen it coming, to be honest. I didn't expect them to, you know, fire her, fire her so quickly. I just thought, you know, something wasn't right with the team with them losing like that. Something was just off, but I didn't expect them to let her, I'm sorry, to fire her, to be honest. I didn't see that coming. But, you know, things happen for a reason. I'm glad it happened. Um, Carl Knox, I believe that's his name. He seems like he's going to get that team together. I can see that happening. And I'm going to be keeping up with the Indiana Fever. Um, I know he just started as a coach. I know he's going to get them together. on room for them to make it to the playoffs. I hope they do make it to the playoffs. Because they, um, I want them to win some games. And as far as the starting five, they need to get that starting five together. I'm going to get to that soon because I just want to know why Destiny Henderson is not starting. I think she needs to be starting in the game. What is going on with that? I mean, yeah, yes, they let her play, but when I was watching the first quarter, she came in about maybe five minutes and 11 seconds during the first quarter. And when they started, they shouldn't even have her sitting that long. And then also, I noticed like during the fourth, qu fourth quarter, the Sparks start catching up to Indiana. 
And they didn't even have Dusty Henderson in the game. And I was pissed off about that. Because Robinson, who plays the point guard, she starts slipping maybe third and fourth quarter. I know the fourth quarter she was slipping. And I felt that Henderson Henny should have been in that game during fourth quarter because the Sparks, they was um, it was close. The score could have been about maybe 84 to 88. Sparks could have had 84 catching up. I think Indiana Fever had 88. Yes, they did have 88. Indiana Fever had 88. Sparks had 84, and they were catching up to him. They didn't even have um, Henny in the game during the fourth quarter. I was pissed about that. Even though Indiana won, I'm happy they still won and they made it through, but anything could have happened. And I feel that when Henderson, when Henny is in the game, it's a whole different vibe of the game. She brings that energy on the court. She's aware of her team members on the court. She knows how to be a point guard. And now I want to talk about, you know, I guess I already started talking about the game. Like I said, Indiana, T Indiana Fever was a whole different team Friday. I felt like I was watching a whole different team. That wasn't the same team that was losing. And then another thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> Um, what I didn't like was about the commentators. You know, when the players play, you hear people talking in the background. So the commentators are saying that Indiana Fever losing four games because Melissa Smith was out injured. And I heard that. And in my mind, I'm telling, I'm saying to myself, they were losing before she was injured. When Alyssa Smith was playing before she was out on injury for a little while, they were still losing. So I don't see the difference. Like the team wasn't really together like they are now. Something was still wrong with the team when Alyssa Smith was playing before she got injured. So I don't even know why they're hyping Alyssa Smith up like, you know, she's the reason why she's, she's the reason why they're winning the games. That's not true because another player, Kelsey Smith, is good. And they gave Melissa Smith player of the game. Kelsey Smith should have had player of the game. Because Kelsey Smith was knocking down threes. And she was, um, to me, she is the main reason why the team won. Because she was knocking down a lot of threes, jumpers. She was doing everything that needed to be done on that court. Melissa Smith, she's a great player as well. And she was knocking down her shots. But Kelsey Smith was, I felt like she went over and above in her game. Now, Emily Angster, the rookie, I remember she was playing with Louisville in college. Now she's with Indiana Fever. Well, Emily Angster, I have nothing to say about her, nothing negative, because I was watching her, and she's um, getting better and better playing in the WNBA games. And the WNBA games, that's a fast-paced game. It's a fast-paced league. When, you get in, when you're leaving from college to WNBA, it's like a whole different game because WNBA, you know, they play in more and more street ball. They get very wild. It's more physical. It's, I would say, a lot more. It's a lot of, I would say, more physical. <laughs> like them girls, they go in there to play. They're not going to be soft on you when you play on the court. They're ready to play. They're ready to go hard on you. Because when I see them games, they be pushing and doing all types of stuff. Compared to like college, when they, um, you may see a little bit of that, but they don't, you know, when you see a little bit of that in college, they may call it a little faster. But in WNBA, you have to be ready to be getting pushed, shoved. They get like very hard on there. Where you may get your arms bruised up, or you just have to be ready for them because they, they play very fast. They're on a like very, very quick pace. So with Emily Angster, um, you know, she's taking advantage of her height. And she's a very tall girl. And that's what you have to do. Take advantage of your height. Don't be afraid. And Emily Angster, she's getting more confident. Taking advantage of her height. That's what needs to be done. So good for her. And she's um, she was consistent with her layups. I did like that about her. So the way she was playing, she's 
to remind me how she was playing in Louisville. I, I looked at it, I said, okay, that's how you do it. Bring back that confidence. Because she played good on Louisville, too. And uh, I think the error she made, I think she needs to be cautious of her fouls. Because a lot of the tall players, they're good for like fouling, especially in the middle. Or trying to block shots. Because I think Emily Angster tried to block shots. And then when you try to block shots, it turned into fouling. So you have to be very cautious of your fouls. And some don't realize that or they don't care. Because when you're a good player and you have at least, say, you on your third foul, it's like, okay, I have to be very careful. Or the coach, I notice when a good player may have a lot of fouls coming or they may be on their third foul, they may sit them down just to um, prevent more fouls coming at them because they may need them on the court. They don't want them to foul out, so they'll get them out the court quick to prevent them from um, fouling out. So um, we don't want that for Indiana Fever. If you do one foul, okay, one foul. But try not to get, I wouldn't even try to get the second foul. But one foul, I can deal with one foul. But the second foul, I would just be careful. And I mentioned how Kelsey Mitchell deserves more credit on how she plays. Because she's a great player. I did mention that. And I mentioned about Melissa Smith, how she was player of the game. When it should have been Kelsey Mitchell, in my opinion. Okay, so during the fourth quarter, you know, I was rooting for the Indiana Fever the whole time. I was very nervous for them because I did mention how the score was end up being 84-88 during the fourth quarter. The game wasn't over. And like I said, I was still pissed about Henderson not starting during the fourth quarter. She needs to start the game, period. Like, with the new coach around, I hope he realized that Destiny needs to start because I do want her to start the game. And I prefer her being point guard over Robinson. Um, there's another um, player in the team. I think she's a rookie as well. Her name is Egbo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name right, but I know it's like with an E. And she's tall. And she was playing center. And I know she started with fouls like in the beginning of the first quarter. And that's a no-no. You play in center, you don't want to start off with fouls. Because they need you in that center. And she seems like she's a good player. So that's something she needs to prevent in the future. Um to stop with the fouls or prevent from getting fouls because that's what they want. They want certain people to get fouled out. You know, when your opponents, you know, they know who the good players are. So they'll try to um, make sure you get a foul. So these players need to realize that. Or sometimes they go in the paint and they get to that good player or that person in the middle and they say, oh, I'm going to go in so they can get like a foul. So they do that so they can try to get them fouled out. So the Sparks. Okay, the Sparks. Um, I'll have to say with the Sparks, I know LA is my hometown, but I was still rooting for Indiana Fever because they really needed that win. The Sparks, I noticed with them, there wasn't no rotation with them. They had, like, a lot of turnovers. Um, they were allowing Indiana to steal the ball from them. But I know there were, like, a lot of turnovers with the Sparks. And there was some that I didn't like, you know, with the tall big girl. I think her name is Liz Cambage. I didn't like how she was um, bumping Destiny Henderson trying to block her when she should have been in, like, the center, like, in the paint. So, so I figure, oh, you're trying to block her because she's a little smaller than you. You know, I that's what's wrong with these um, players that play the center position. They try to um, 
block the people that's smaller than them. It's okay to block the ball. You're playing basketball. I mean, your job is to block them, but I feel that sometimes they do things intentionally, and that bump, like it was, looked like a little bump, or she was just trying to block her from the from her teammate that had the ball. It just seemed like that block was intentional. But you know, you notice a lot of things on the court. And um, that's all I want to talk about with the Indiana Fever. And you know, they have a new coach. I hope to see some more wins. And from what I read, they have another game on, I think this coming to, I think this coming Wednesday. It could be with the Connecticut Sun. I have to look it up, but I believe they have a game this Wednesday. And I did watch the Connecticut Sun yesterday. They played, I'm trying to remember who they played. Because I know they also have a coach who's out on health protocol. I think their coach name is Curtis on University, I'm mean, not University of Connecticut, but Connecticut Sun. So they had the assistant coach coach them so that was another situation they coach wasn't with him either but he's he's still their coach i think of health reasons or something going on he wasn't there with them but he should be back so the assistant coach took in place and they ended up winning the game and i was hoping they won <laughs> but they did win so um good for them and i'm trying to remember who they play let me look that up i should have had it written down already Oh, okay, now I remember. It was the Washington Mystics. No, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> My fault. Oh, yes, yes, it was. It was the Washington Mystics. They beat the Washington Mystics. So the Mystics had 71, the Sun had 79. So the Sun beat them. And the Sun, they have a great addition to the team, like Courtney Williams. Courtney Williams is kicking butt on the team. I actually like um, that they put Courtney Williams on the Connecticut Sun. I think that's a good fit for her. The Atlanta Dream, I wasn't sure. I didn't really pay much attention to her on the Atlanta Dream. On the Atlanta Dream. But for some reason, on the Connecticut Sun, I think that's a good fit for her to be on that team. It's just something about her being on that team that's a good fit. And then, so I want to go back to the Sparks versus the Fever. So the Sparks had 96, Fever had 101, 101, 96 to 101, Fever won a game. And that is about it. There were some games that came on earlier. Uh, I'm just going to slip in and talk about it a little bit. Mercury played Dream earlier. Um, the Atlanta Dream beat the they beat the Atlanta Dream beat the um, Phoenix Mercury bad. <laughs> that was a sad game because Atlanta Dream beat the Mercury. That was just, and you know the Mercury they're going through a lot right now, especially with Brittany Griner not being there. Um, my prayers go out to Brittany Griner. I hope she comes back to the United States soon. I wish her well. I hope it, I hope she's doing okay. But you know they seem kind of off right now because she's not there. I know she was there that had the team together a bit. And then the Liberty played the Storm. Liberty had 61. Storm had 92. Liberty is another... Liberty um, has not been playing well themselves, but the Indiana Fever, they weren't playing well until they had this the new coach. When the new coach came Friday, they did win. So hopefully... Um, more winning games are coming soon. But um, the Liberty, New York Liberty, I don't know what's going on with the New York Liberty. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with them because they've been, they were, they've been losing games. Okay, so the Indiana Fever, they played Tuesday against the Washington Mystics at 7. So it could be on League Pass the WBA League Pass .com, that website where you can watch the games. And I did check that out. 
because at first I wasn't sure if you needed to pay so much a year, but I was like, let me check it out. And I checked it out and it do let you, if you just want to see one game, they give you the choice to pay maybe a certain amount for the year, maybe $24.99 a month, or you can just pay $2.99 just to watch one game and you're done. So that's what I did. I did the $2.99 where I can just choose what game I want to watch, pay my $2.99 and I'm done. I'm not on no yearly plan. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, so I could, you know, watch the games on here if it's not on national television. So that worked out a bit. <clears throat> so just to let you guys know, if you want to watch the games, if you feel like the league pass is some, something you have to um, pay for the year, you don't have to. You have the choice. It's up to you. You can either wait to come on TV or if you want to get on the league pass and watch it, you can pay $2.99 just to watch that game. And then when the game over, they turn it off for you. And that's just simple as that. And I'm going to end it from here. You want to see the Indiana Fever play again. They will play Tuesday at 7 p.m. against the Washington Mystics. If they're not on TV, um, you can check to see if they're on Prime Video Facebook. Uh, most likely LeaguePass.com. You can watch that if you want to get like a clear look. Because I'd rather pay, to be honest, I'd rather do the League Pass that way I can get a, a clear look at the game. Sometimes when you watch it on Facebook, you don't really see it well. So by me watching it on League Pass on my iPad, I can see the game very well. But it's totally your choice. It's up to you. It's an option. All right. Um, you guys have a great night. And talk to you later. Bye-bye.